Hello world and welcome to Art Pro. Today I am doing Drew Draws Draw This In Your Style Challenge and it's using the subject matter of a woman with some ghostly hands reaching towards the key she's holding very dearly. She seems very surprised in the original drawing but I wanted to take a spin on it. Looking through Instagram I realized that many of the other people who participated in this used different expressions and emotions in their character. So some were surprised, others were startled, some were completely at peace, others were seemingly friends with the hands, if not the person controlling the hands. So I tried something different. I tried a sense of the hands really being like servants to her but only to trick her. They wanted to make her feel comfortable and to get her to drop her guard so that they could sneakily take the key without her noticing. So I started off in pencil in my sketchbook. It was really small, but I liked how it turned out and I didn't really want to mess that up. So I copied it and printed it out at a larger scale, very light, so that it was almost as though I was starting again from pencil. Then I filled in what needed to be filled in in pencil. Then I outlined in the 01 micron pen. So I only outlined the things that were specifically tangible or fully corporeal. As these hands were meant to be ghostly and very light, I kept them in the light pencil lines so that they would essentially fade away. I have this teapot and the teacup and the whole time I was drawing it I was actually thinking about Beauty and the Beast where there's Mrs. Potts and Chip. I didn't actually put a chip or faces on them but just know that if there's any inspiration that's where it was taken from. For many of the colors I used the Artist's Loft alcohol-based markers. These were the first drawing markers that I've ever purchased and I bought them about a year and maybe four months ago. I haven't really used them much but I think they blend well when you move quickly but they don't really go over each other that well, I'd say. And another problem I've noticed with them is that the felt tips, especially for the finer side, they tend to fray and lose ink very quickly. So on some of them, some of the markers, they still work, they still look good, but things like the grayish tone that I had, it was more of a warm gray. That one, the marker was completely dry. I had to hold it upside down and wait all day for the ink to finally get back down to the tip and even then only half of the marker was working. Okay, so for the hands, I'm using a light blue because, well, again, I don't really have that much variety in color considering I mostly work in black and white, but I wanted it to be very recessive so that they're not competing too much with the more solid person in the middle and using of course, perspective with color. You know that blues tend to be drawn back more and the warmer tones tend to pop more. So that's really where I was going with this color choice. So the draw this in your style challenge is something that's been going around Instagram for a while. And I really appreciate it. It shows these artists doing what they do, making their content, and then sharing it with other artists, opening the door for them to try these same subject matters in their own style. You know, it's making the community work together on a singular project, and I think that's really inspiring. So, of course, I wanted to try it. Originally, I did one that was more closely tied or closely related to how I normally draw. It was very angular and using geometric shapes. 
and I think it came out really good. It was received well too. But then I wanted to try something more outside the box for me. So, <laughs> cause I draw boxes a lot of the time. And I chose to do something more illustrative. So this is more closely tied to what some of the other participants would have done. Of course, I'm very out of practice. <laughs> But this is, again, one of the best ways I can think of to share your work with other artists and other creatives. A bad example of people, quote unquote, sharing work is when someone steals your work and claims it as their own. This happens a lot on the internet, um, especially when you are sharing your work openly. It happened to me last year well, it was actually in December, and yeah, I wouldn't have noticed had I not followed the person before they posted this. But yeah, what they did was they looked at my work, they copied it, as in they redrew it, and then they submitted it as a university assignment. This was in Palestine, so I, I don't know what the subject was, I don't know what they were using it for or anything, I just know that this is the excuse the guy gave. And of course, the first thing you should always do is ask, can you give me credit for this? Are you going to pay me for this? Or, hey, why did you do that? That's not cool. I pretty much said all of that. And he said, no, please don't say anything. Don't do anything. I can't give you credit right now because I submitted it as an assignment and I'm going to delete the post in two days. By the way, it's still not deleted, and it's been a month. All he did was block me. But what I'm saying here is that to copy someone's work and hand it in as your own is really not cool. I went through university without stealing work. Everything that I submitted was genuinely my own. It was completely something that I worked on. I stayed up day and night for hours at school, just working on, coming up with the idea. So for someone else to steal my work, it felt like a, yeah, it was a punch in the dark. Like I didn't expect that, I didn't see it coming, and it hurt me way more than I thought it would. This just shows that when I create something, I'm at the point where it actually means something to me now. You know, there was a time that Maybe I wouldn't feel that bad about it, but as I'm developing more and appreciating the process so much more now, it hurts. It hurt me quite a bit. Not to get mopey, but it did. So I went around asking other people what their experiences have been with others stealing their work, and they had varying points. Many of them said, go, you know, go to the source and call them out, get the information for their university, and just tell them what this person has done. Get their name, get their Instagram account name, everything, and just go straight, guns a blazing. But I didn't do that. <laughs> Others were saying that since this person took the time to actually draw it over by hand, then you don't necessarily have any claim to copyright because they haven't necessarily stolen your image. They've just stolen the subject matter, essentially. I don't know really at this point if there was a claim to be made, but I was so stressed and had so much on my mind at the time that I couldn't afford to really dedicate anything more to them. But yeah, I mean, you live, you learn, and you move on eventually. Just make it known that you're not a fan of this. And this is one of the best ways to share your work, as I was saying before. Just open up with competition and keep sharing, keep working, because your work is awesome.
Two of my inspirations for this video were Emily Artful, who did a story time on the time she got her work stolen, and Mark Creeley, who goes through different ways of rendering the same image. I'll leave the links in the description below. And this is a final product. So if you liked it, and if you want more story time or sketchbook story times like this one, leave a like, leave a comment, and please share, it really helps. And if you want, you can follow me on Instagram, at Arcfro, that's where I started, and that's where I'm going to continue posting.